Shamrock FC 300 is coming up on Friday night from the River City Casino in St. Louis. Now joined by the matchmaker of Shamrock FC, Rob Donica. Rob, I, I appreciate the time. Uh, obviously, this is a huge event for Shamrock FC coming up on Friday night. Uh, you got a, a, a nice matchup here. A, as a matchmaker, I mean, it, with it being the 300 show, did you kind of feel like uh, you had to kind of make this a special fight card? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've been doing it uh, coming up on 20 years, starting in uh, 2018. So definitely wanted to uh, try to maximize uh, the talent we have, uh, signed athletes plus some other ones. So that way we can uh, put together a great card for everybody as this kind of milestone uh, event comes forward. As you think about this being a 300 show, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you have a, a ton of great memories, but is there maybe any memories from, uh, you know, the early days that, that really stick out to you? You know, uh, the, over time, we've kind of changed venues quite a bit over the years. So, I mean, I think the uh, most memorable one is uh, probably 2012 when we really got into the casinos here. And uh, the first one we got into was with uh, Lumiere Casino, um, which was owned by Pinnacle and that started a really good uh, relationship with us here. So we've expanded now and we're going to be in uh, additional casinos next year. We added one here locally. So we're kind of moving forward from there and growing at the same time. As I look at your fight card, there's uh, there's a couple of names that stick out to me, guys. I've had a chance to talk to in the past. Uh, Rashad Lovelace, who, who's trying to bounce back from a loss, and the other one is Arian Zeki, who uh, has definitely has it down on knowing how to promote a fight. You know, he's he had that one loss, but he, he's bounced back here. I mean, but for you as a matchmaker, is, is there a fight outside of the main event on this fight card that really sticks out to you that that fans need to be paying attention to? You know, honestly, there's a couple on the main card there. Um, I say one that's really going to be maybe a sleeper that no one's really talking about is uh, Joe Mueller versus uh, Matt Murphy. Joe Mueller's a uh, world-class Muay Thai fighter, um, probably over 30 Muay Thai fights. He's been all over the world fighting. He's making his MMA debut against, you know, a veteran of the sport who's probably got 30 MMA fights between, you know, his amateur and professional, which is Matt Murphy. Um I can't see that one going to the ground at all, and both of them are uh, stand-up strikers. So that one sticks out in my mind that shouldn't probably be the first one on the main card, but we put it there just because it's uh, a very exciting fight, get people interested and uh, get people watching and get people excited about it. Is that one of those things that, that you and Jesse sit down and, and when you're thinking about, you know, the fights that are going to be in the main car, is it about, okay, you know, is it about finding that one fight that you're like, man, this this is a fight that's ultimately, you know, set the night off and, and this is what's going to get the fans, whether, you know, they're in attendance or, or they're watching on ShamrockFightingChampionships.com? You know, there is. Um, it's a group effort, actually. We even get down to the point to where our PR guy, Jeremy Johnson, gets involved in kind of seeing what our order should be for it at the same time just with um, – We've got our graphic designers and uh, our videographer who really sits back with us every day. And when we have our meetings and, you know, it's kind of a group effort here with the team to say, you know, what do we think should be the order? Who do we think is going to be more exciting? And, you know, just kind of powwow on it and really put the card together. And it seemed to work over the, all these years. So we keep going forward with that. Uh, this card, uh, Garrett Gross versus Garrett Muir, uh, two guys. I think a lot of people would, would recognize their names. Uh, what, what intrigued you about this matchup? You know, Garrett Gross is a guy that's, uh, you know, been with us for years, probably at least three, four years now. Um, even before that, he fought a couple of amateur fights with us. Um, he's really grown as an athlete and also as a person. So for that fight, you've got two tough guys. Neither one of them are going to back down. Um, looking at Garrett Mueller, Garrett Mueller has never been knocked out, never been really dropped by a punch. Uh, head, he's, he's been head kicked. I mean, he just doesn't go down. Um, you know, Garrett's going to throw hard punches. Both of them are going to come forward. So looking at that card and seeing what probably the best fight on that card would be is those two guys. Both of them are trying to make a run at our title, I think. Um, we've kind of had some discussions with them. They're up there in the rankings. So uh, that's going to kind of see who's going to be a uh, superior 155 or for us. You also got uh, another fighter on this card that a lot of people remember. Uh, it has not gone well for him uh, in his past couple of fights here, and that's Adam Sella. Uh, you know, Adam is a guy that, I mean, I, I, he, he always probably going to remember for, for what happened on, on the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, you know, when you have a guy that, that's not, you know, that's, that's struggled recently, how, how do you, is it, is it tough to find him matches or is it one of those things that, um, you know, really it's not difficult? You know, with Adam, what it is, is, you know, goes back to, you know, anybody that's on a losing streak that's got the UFC and the Ultimate Fighter behind him. You know, everybody wants 
their name, you know, his name on their record is a win. Um, so tough, yeah, sometimes, but majority of the time I can find a guy that's ready to j- jump on board no matter who it is, no matter what skill level, just because they want that name on their record saying, hey, you know, I beat a UFC guy that was in Ultimate Fighter. Um, yeah, he has had a skid lately. I think he's lost seven out of his, or six out of his last seven. Um, you know, not all of them, you know, truly lost. He's lost a close split decision in someone else's hometown. His last fight was a disqualification, um, controversial one about elbows to the back of the head. So, I mean, it's one of those things that's, I think he's kind of came to a point in his career where before he was doing it more for fun. Um, and now he's kind of rethought that and said, you know, let me really buckle down. He's changed a couple things in his training, um, a couple things in his routine. And, uh, I think this is going to be a new improved Adam when we see him this weekend. Of course, uh, it is a, a long night of fights. I believe it's 15 fights that you have uh, coming up on Friday night. When you look at that preliminary card, is uh, you know a lot of you know guys who are young in their career, but is there someone that uh, you know really? You, it's more of you're you're interested to see how they perform. Yeah, I'd say um, Colin Parr is a very good athlete. Plus, he's a purple belt in jujitsu. Um, he trains under uh, UFC veteran Kyle Watson, so um, he's someone that's I believe he's eight and two now as an amateur. So he's someone that I think is very close to that level to where he could possibly make that pro step. Um, he's going to be taking on a very tough guy, Miguel Libizo, who's also a jiu-jitsu guy. So we'll see how that fight goes. It's very interesting to me to see you know how Colin does with that. Being another jiu-jitsu guy, he's kind of had the upper hand being a purple belt lately in his couple of his fights, but I think he's going to be um, someone to really watch. Uh, another two guys we've got together would be uh, uh, Justin Angel, and he's fighting Mark Kirkland. Both those guys come straight forward, very talented guys. Um, Justin Angel, military kid who took some time off, I think three, four years took off in between his last fight and the fight before that, so he's coming back and Mark Kirkland's moving down a little bit in weight, trying to make that slow transition into the lightweight division to where I think he's going to be at when he hits that pro level. Generally speaking, is it harder to match make an amateur fight than a pro fight? You know, um, yes and no. You know, on the pro fight, you obviously have about agreements, about contracts, um, you, you know, guys that we have have signed, so they're chomping at the bit. You know, amateur fights, you know, in the beginning, I think, their first couple fights it's a little tougher just because you got guys that you know aren't 100 percent dedicated you know guys get injured or just feel like not fighting you know two weeks out um but as far as where we're at here in st louis and with kansas city i mean both of them are very good cities to where mma's really boomed lately especially you know you got tyron woodley coming out of here you got michael chandler kansas city had bobby volker james kraus the guys at glory so it's starting to develop a lot, and, uh, you know, I think over time those gyms that were just kind of throw-together gyms have kind of went to the wayside, and we got gyms that are now producing good fighters. You know, Bellator has come into that St. Louis market. The UFC is coming in, in January for a fight night card. How, how does how do you think that affects Shamrock FC going forward? Is it one of those things that you look at and say, the UFC coming to town is ultimately going to just put more eyeballs on our promotion? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, Bellator's, we have had a great relationship with Scott Coker over the years, dating back to Strike Force days. Um, so when he wanted to come here, we said, we're all about it. We'll help out in any way we can. UFC coming here just, you know, solidifies that, you know, St. Louis, part of the Midwest, is definitely a MMA city, and they've recognized it just like they did in Kansas City when they went there, what, three months ago, four months ago. Yeah. So I think it definitely brings eyeballs that, you know, some people out there that are just truly quote-unquote UFC fans that don't really follow MMA, I think it really can open the doors for us there to say, hey, you know, there's other MMA promotions that are here locally that are still doing it and doing it all the time. So I think it could increase our fan base quite a bit. And who knows, we could see some Shamrock guys potentially get their UFC opportunity on that fight car. They do like to try to get some local guys. I mean, I've always said you got to have – I mean, if Tyron Woodley is healthy, I don't see how you don't go to St. Louis without Woodley. Yeah, I don't know. That's – they really haven't said much about it. You know, the, they're lingering out there about the Diaz, whether it's on, whether it's not. Um, you know, I noticed that, uh, you know, I don't think it, I think it's Adam Sell is kind of anxious to see how, um, uh, what's his name, comes into his town and performs. Uriah Hall. Uriah Hall, correct. So uh, I was joking with him the other day, asking if he's going to have front row seat for it to see if there's another knockout or not. So. 
Yeah, of course he's all he's always going to be like your know, Uriah Hall no matter no matter right. what. I mean that's he's on every highlight video around every perfect knockout. So <sighs> that, that that's got. to I mean I I have to imagine just Adam's got to turn the channel when he sees that. You know he's got a, he's got a good mindset about it. You know he's one of those guys that um, got into MMA just trying to lose weight out of high school. Ended up doing pretty well with kickboxing and stuff. Made that transition. Um, he's a union uh, iron worker. Uh, so, I mean, it's more of one of those things where it's just kind of a hobby at first. And I think now it's kind of turned more into, okay, what can we do with it? And I think that's kind of his mindset going into this fight and through his training camp from what I've seen and heard that he's going to actually be a different person this fight. Speaking of how he got in the MMA, how did you get in MMA? You know, me and Jesse started the company back in 1998. So it's a pretty unique situation that we just kind of met. He was kickboxing. You know, we were working together and just wanted to – we figured there was a, a void for the fan experience pretty much for fights. It just wasn't one of those things where you just throw it into a gymnasium and put fights on. So we went in and, you know, some people that we knew in the nightclubs and stuff like that really started something different. You know, make it more of a fan-friendly place to where it's more of a, a nightclub feel, a social environment, and somewhere fun to go just not to watch fights. And, of course, uh, it's coming up on Friday night, Shamrock FC 300 from the River City Casino in St. Louis. If you're not in the St. Louis area, you can uh, watch this event, shamrockfightingchampionships.com. Rob, I really appreciate the time, and uh, have some good fights on Friday night, man. Great. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot.